Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! to like excitement and trouble and heartaches, well, there's nothing like being a frontier town lawyer like me, Chad Remington. Yep, if it isn't one thing, it's the next, and much of the time, it's all three. Excitement and trouble and heartaches all together. A pretty good example of what I mean occurred, oh, just about a few weeks ago, about the time I thought that for a while, at least, my life was going to be peaceable. I've got my law offices, such as they are, up over the Dos Rios livery stable, which is owned by Cherokee O'Bannon, now that he's turned over a new leaf and stopped peddling his genuine Cherokee Indian rattlesnake oil. And to all intents and purposes, he's settled down. Well, things were quiet. It was just before supper, and Cherokee had wandered upstairs to try to talk me into eating with him at a place notorious for its bad food, but famous for its bottled goods. Ted, you're a man of education. Have you ever heard about the Latin races, the French and the Italians? Why, certainly, Cherokee. Not only have I heard of them, but I guess I know about as many Frenchmen and Italians as the next man. Why? What's all that got to do with eating supper in a dive? Well, they're pretty fine people, the French and the Italians. They've learned the worst thing that a man can do to his stomach is to eat food and wash it down with water. Fact of the matter is, you'll always find a bottle of something to... Oh, oh, so that's it, huh? Well, I mean it. A little alcohol not only stimulates the digestive juices, but also relaxes a man. At the rate you've been going lately, I think there'd be nothing better for you Hold than... Hold it, Cherokee. Wouldn't you say that those two men who have just tied off outside were coming up here? Where? Oh, yeah. In fact, they are coming up. Who are they? I've never seen them before. Claimed if I know, but if there's a fee involved, those two gentlemen are just about to engage the services of a lawyer. Come on in. Uh, you the lawyer who's got that shingle up outside? Uh, Chad Remington? Yes, sir. Well, my name's Kerr Remington, and this is a neighbor of mine, Vic Leach. Howdy. Uh, Mr. Kerr and Mr. Leach, shake hands with Cherokee O'Bannon. Oh, well, Howdy. How do you do, Mr. Bannon? Uh, you busy, Remington? Got a few minutes to talk to us? Well, I got all night, if that's what it takes. Oh, uh, sit down, gentlemen. <clears throat> yes, yes, thank you. Now, uh, Leach and I uh, come over from Sundown Valley Way. Oh, Sundown Valley, eh? Beautiful country over there. It was until them dad blamed turnip farmers come in with their government homesteads. Oh, so? Ever since they moved in, taking over half of the water holes and streams, like... Us honest ranchers are having a tough time trying to make a living. They've obtained these homesteads with the water rights legally, haven't they? Ah, legally, my neck. We were there first, and that water belongs to us. Our cattle's dying off like flies. What we gotta do is get them homesteaders out of there. That's why we come to see you. Why well, come to see me about a thing like that? Uh -huh. What you gentlemen need isn't an attorney. You need a little common sense. Now, wait a minute. I'm afraid Cherokee's right. You see, even though I do practice law, I own a ranch, too. A ranch my father left me, where I was born. Well, what's that got to do with it? I don't know what that has to do with your particular problem, but I'm just mentioning it so that when I say what I'm going to say, you'll realize that I know what I'm talking about. Will you quit beating around the bush? All right. We've got a water shortage over here in Dos Rios, too, just like you have over in Sundown Valley. Except that we've learned enough to know that small folks who come in here aren't to blame. We're the ones at fault. 
the ranchers themselves. Are you out of your head or something? Far from it. Now, the whole trouble is that with the way the cattle market's been back east, all of us have been making money hand over fist. And as a result, we've overstocked our ranches to the point that there isn't enough grass or water to support that much stock. Oh, oh, I suppose there's something wrong in a man making a little money? Not at all. Unless it's at the expense of someone else, Mr. Kerr. But that isn't answering your original question. As an attorney, and this advice is completely free, I'm forced to warn you that if you try to take the law into your own hands and attempt to get the homesteaders out, you'll be needing an attorney, all right. An attorney to defend you in court. Yeah, if the undertaker hasn't got you before that, starting a range war. Well, you're a fine lot of help you are. We heard you was a smart lawyer. Well, I'm sorry to have disillusioned you, but my brains don't run in that direction. Uh, yes, 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 well, don't go sending me no bill for this kind of advice. And if you happen to show up in Sundown Valley, all I can say is you, you better change your tune. <laughs> Come on, Leach. This was sure a waste of time. Now, there go the first two-legged polecats I've seen since the circus sideshow. Turkey, I'll go to supper at that place you've been ranting about if, after we're through, you'll throw saddles on two of your horses and go for a ride. Go for a ride? Yeah, and be sure to take a nightshirt and a toothbrush along, Cherokee, because we're going over to Sundown Valley before Messrs. Leach and Kerr stir up enough trouble to blanket that whole place in gun smoke. <laughs> While Cherokee and I were on our way to sundown, we later found out that Kerr and Leach were already back there and making their own plans. Plans that meant a range war if they ever got the thing ruled. Now, the way I see it, Leach, is to do the whole thing on the QT. Now, if we start blowing things apart, well, Remington's right. We may end up in jail. Uh, what do you mean, the QT? Well, you know, not try any strong-arm stuff. Uh, just threaten them filthy nesters. <laughs> Make it uncomfortable for them. Scare them out. Well, I don't know. Nesters' icing don't scare easy. Uh, yeah? uh, you know that woman lives down by the foot of White Oak Creek? Uh, what's her name? You mean Violet Kennedy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's got five springs on that place they homestead in. And since her husband died, there's nobody but the old gal herself. And that kid she's got. Yeah, how are you going to run her out of there? I don't know if you ever knew it or not, but before I moved into Sundown, uh, I was born and brought up in the garter snake country, up in the Dakotas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And something happened years ago up there that I don't think Violet Kennedy would want anybody to find out. And I think a little visit to her place will persuade Violet that she'd better... Uh, do her bloomin' someplace else. <laughs> yeah, well, come on. Now, doggone it, either get off my place or I'll blast y'all. You're making a mistake, Mrs. Kennedy. We'll see who's making a mistake. Now, are you gonna get off of here? Oh, sure, yes, we'll get off, but we're coming back. Coming back in 24 hours. And if you're still here, Mrs. Kennedy, uh, uh, you'll be the first woman a garter snake ever choked to death. <laughs> yeah, come on, Rach. Them dirty, sniveling, backbiting vultures. Well, who are those men, Mom? Huh? When did you get home, Terry? I put the cow in the barn and came in through the back door. Who are those men? Oh, uh, why, oh, they were just neighbors of ours, paying a little social visit, son. Gosh, that's strange. Ranchers around here fight shy of our places. We let smallpox or something. Um, Terry, I've been thinking for a long time that now with your father dead, maybe you and me'd be better off if we moved out west someplace. Maybe California. Oh, Ma. This, uh, uh Climate, it's too severe for a boy like you and an old lady like me. But, Ma, I don't want to go to California, any place else. I, I want to stay here. Well, my mind's made up. Since I always have believed in doing things when I've decided on them. Come on, Terry, we're packing up right now. Of course, neither Cherokee nor I, by this time almost to Sundown Valley 
knew what Kerr and Vic Leach had done, let alone did we know Violet Kennedy and her 11-year-old youngster. Nor as we jogged along across the trails which lead over the green rolling hills looking down into the valley below, did we suspect that we'd meet the Kennedys as soon as we did, and under such tragic circumstances. Chad, I have no compunction in admitting that this long ride has stirred up a considerable thirst in my part's throat. Indeed it has. Indeed it has. Well, Senor O'Bannon, there's a homesteader's cabin down below, and I can see a well out in the front yard. A well? <laughs> Bad enough having to bathe in that stuff, let alone pour aqueous liquids into one's delicate inside. And if your insides are delicate, then so is a railroad locomotive. And if you're not thirsty enough to drink water... Hello, what's that down there? A wagon loaded with household goods. Here, someone's moving out of Sundown Valley. They must be in an awful hurry to get wherever they're going. Look at that team run. Yes, look at that team run. Cherokee, it's dimes to donuts. Those horses have got the bits in their teeth and they're running away. <laughs> running away? Well, then, come on. Let's get down there and see if we can't stop them before that wagon turns over. Knock on it, Cherokee. If a wagon that size turns over, there's not going to be much left of anything or anybody. Had our horses been fresh, we might have had a chance of getting there fast, but after the long ride, it seemed hours before we actually started closing the distance between us. We raked those poor horses' flanks, and their hooves pounded on the sun-baked road like war-maddened Indians on their drums. Then, just as we were overtaking the wagon, it neared a sharp turn, and as the panicky team drove into the turn, the wagon suddenly upended. And... Whoa! Excuse me, son. I'll look at your mother. Uh, she's hurt. She's sure. hurt bad. She sure is, Chad. Leg's broken, just below the knee. Ma! Now, son, you'd be a lot more help if you got hold of yourself and tried to answer a couple of questions. Uh, yes, sir. Now, the best thing for your mother is to get her into a bed uh, as fast as we can. Did you live any place around here? Not too far. About six miles back. Good. And then we'll make a squaw drag and haul her back there till we can get some professional help. Oh, no. Can't go back, can't. Now, uh, you'd better stay quiet, ma'am, and save what strength you have left. Oh, no, can't go back there. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we've no choice. Unless you're taken indoors and cared for, you might lose that leg. More? No! Come on, Cherokee. We'll see what we can salvage out of what furniture isn't smashed to kindling, and after that, we'll get this lady back into Sundown Valley, whether she wants to go or not. No, no, please. Please, please. <laughs> We'll return to the second act of Sundown Valley, our exciting frontier town adventure in just a few moments. Now, Frontier Town. As a Frontier Town lawyer, I've knocked around a bit, but I'd never really seen fear until I looked into Mrs. Kennedy's eyes as we carried her back into the house which had once been her home. We patched up a bed frame as best we could, and improvising a splint with some pieces of broken chair, we made her as comfortable as possible, leaving little Terry to watch over while Cherokee and I rode back out to the spot where their possessions were scattered for hundreds of yards over the roof. Look here, Chad. Look at this. Humpback trunk. Smashed to smithereens and clothes and papers scattered every which way. I wonder what anybody'd be saving an old newspaper for. Maybe it's got a picture of her in it. She was married. Yeah. Yeah, there is a picture of her in it, all right. See, I told you. I guess you never heard of a woman called Violet Stevenson, did you? Violet Stevenson. Violet Stevenson. Name has a familiar ring. Well, years ago, back in the Garter Snake country of the Dakotas, Violet was quite a belle. By George, I remember it now. 
Isn't she the one who got into a scrape with the sheriff and perforated him with the little handgun she carried in her pocketbook? So the story goes, Cherokee. Violet Stevenson killed the sheriff, and because he had been a big wheel up there in politics, it stirred up quite a commotion. But the woman we picked up here was Violet Stevenson. How did she ever escape hanging? Well, best I can remember, nobody ever knew. The night before she was to be hanged, she disappeared from the jail. Ah. And that's... That's the poor woman we picked up. No wonder she looked so frightened. I imagine she's spent most of her life since then being frightened. But since this happened almost 20 years ago, I don't know why that fear suddenly was all crystallized today. Yeah, that's right. I wonder why, too. This may be throwing a wide loop, Cherokee, but did you notice that there seemed to be five little springs on her place? Yes. And if you remember, springs and water seem to be the principal concern of those two so-called decent citizens who paid us that call yesterday, Kerr and Leach. You don't think they found out and threatened her, do you? Well, it seems to be the only thing that makes sense, doesn't it, Cherokee? Yes, it does. But now I don't know what to do. It's all right helping a poor woman with a broken leg, but helping a fugitive from justice is something else again. Well, if she is Violet Stevenson, and there seems to be little question about it from her resemblance to the picture, I think I'm going to take advantage of an old friendship and find out what can be done. An old friendship? Yes, if he's still alive, the judge over in this part of the country is an old-timer by the name of Amos Peabody. I've known him on and off ever since I was a boy. And since we have to go into sundown to find a doctor, you and I are paying a call on the judge and finding out a few things, just as soon as we know that Mrs. Kennedy's going to have proper medical attention. doctor knew of Mrs. Kennedy and wasted no time packing his bag and heading out there. We weren't with him long, but while we were, someone else had gone to the judge's office and paid a call on him. Yep, you guessed it, Kerr and Leach. Now, has that Kennedy woman got a right to stick a shotgun in my face and order me off her place, Judge? Yeah, if her homestead claim has been properly filed and uh, all her assessment work done... The property is hers, and she has a perfect right. Well, I don't see no sense in the government giving land away to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. The government isn't giving its land away. The government is the people, and the land is theirs already. Yeah, now, look, um, uh, let's not get into any complicated arguments. Now, Judge, if Leach and me made it worth your while, couldn't you issue some kind of an order that... Um... Are you trying to bribe me? Well, now, nobody minds picking up a little easy money, and besides, that woman's got a pass. Get out of my office, both of you. There's a sizable reward. I said I... get out. Come on, Kerr. There are other ways of handling this. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, Mr. Remington, that Judge Peabody died last year. They uh, sent me down here to take his place. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, well, I'd known Judge Peabody all my life, and I wanted to get his opinion on a few questions. Well, since the law is the law, I don't see why this eminently respectable jurist couldn't give you the same opinion, Chad. Well, this is a hypothetical case, Judge. Uh -huh. But suppose about 20 years ago, a woman had committed a serious crime. And since then, she has lived a decent life, married, and has a son. And then someone finds out about her. And uh, threatens to expose her? Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, if she'd moved to a different part of the country from where the crime had been committed, well, what do you think the judge who has the jurisdiction in the place she's now living might do? Yeah. Uh. Well, now, that, uh, that might depend a good deal on the judge. <laughs> if the man had slept badly the night before, it, it might go hard with her. Well, I'm afraid in asking a hypothetical question, I was entitled to no more than a hypothetical answer. But actually, Judge, there is such a woman living here in Sundown, and, well, if I can, I'm anxious to help her. Well, if I knew the woman and uh, what the crime was and where it was committed... All right. The crime, as I heard it, was murder. 
He shot and killed a sheriff up in the Garter Snake country in the Dakotas. Do you mean to say that Violet Stevenson is living here? Here in sundown? Uh-oh. Now we are in for it. I haven't said who it is, Judge. But do you know Violet Stevenson? No, her. Well, I was the deputy sheriff who arrested her. And, and I've been looking for her ever since she... Well, uh, ever since she got out of jail. I would have to go and open my big mouth. Now, wait a minute. We haven't said this woman was Violet Stevenson. Oh, no? Well, I've been carrying the original warrant that was issued for her arrest. And unless you two want to go to jail for contempt of court, you're taking me out to where she is. And after all these years, my search will be over. <laughs> Well, this is a fine mess, with that Kennedy woman back there living in that cabin again. If that dad blame judge had a brain in his head, uh, he would have helped us. But he didn't. Now, after boasting about how we got rid of her, we, we made a couple of fools of ourselves. Maybe we had. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yes, I just remembered. That cabin she lives in is right at the foot of Devil's Slide. The kitchen window isn't ten feet from the cliff. Yeah. Yeah. That's a dangerous place to build a cabin. I mean, there have been a lot of landslides down at Devil's Slide. Uh, what if there should be a landslide again? Hmm? <laughs> that cabin that looked like a busted matchbox. <laughs> well, what in tarnation makes you think there's going to be a landslide? Oh, you're not headed, idiot. Don't you see? With a little help from us up on top of Devil's Slide... A hundred thousand tons of dirt and boulders and hit that place just as if we aimed at it with a cannon. Mm. Well, I don't know, Kerr. Well, I do. So come on, Leach, we're getting out the devil's slide. And believe me, we ain't wasting no time. <laughs> As we rode back toward Kennedy's shabby little cabin, I spent a lot of time feeling sorry for myself for having opened my big mouth. But had I known the facts, I wouldn't have wasted any sympathy on me. But I would have felt sorry for Violet, caught as she was between the judge with his warrant and Leach and Kerr with their landslide. Now, you're just wasting your breath trying to argue with me, Remington. Even a man with half a brain ought to realize that after looking for Violet for almost 20 years, I'm not going to give up now. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not. <laughs> well, I certainly don't see anything to laugh at in this. <laughs> well, you will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> you know, I've always flattered myself on being a pretty good judge of men, but you certainly fooled me. <laughs> Young man, after 20 years... This is one day when nobody can insult me. Well, if you're going to get any satisfaction out of slapping a warrant on a poor woman with a broken... Remington, that noise. What is it? Billy Blue Blazes, Chad. Hear that rumbling? Sounds like a landslide. It is a landslide. Look, you can just see where it's starting up there, about 4,000 feet up on the top of that cliff. Chad, the way it's starting, it's going to hit that house. That's Mrs. Kennedy's cabin. That's Violet's cabin? Get up there, you... Of all the cold-blooded... What do you want to do, serve that warrant before she's killed? Yeah, never you mind about me. Just get that horse running. Come on now, get up! Cherokee, come on. There's still a chance we may be able to get her out of that house. Mr. Remington, quit. Help me get Mom out of here. Get Terry out of here. Never mind me. I can't move. Hey, Violet, we're going to get you out of here if it's the last thing we do. Now, now, come on, boys. Lend me a hand before the lot of us are killed. All right, easy now. All right, up she goes. Terry, you open that door and then run for it. All right, Chad. Let's get her out of here now. Stop here. Come on. That landslide's almost on top of us. I'll hold her, Judge. Judge, who are you? Hey, never mind, Violet. I've got you now, and I'm never going to let you. <laughs> yes, well, I think that'll be a lesson to the homesteaders around Sundown Valley. 
Yeah, I wish that landslide hadn't kicked up so much dust. I couldn't see a thing. Oh, yes. Uh, we're better than Mother Nature. When we start a landslide, it's really a lie. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Kerr, when you start a landslide, it'll land you in prison. All right, come on in, Judge. And you got any idea of making a run for it? You two filthy, sneaking, double-dealing, dirty, yellow-spine buzzards. <laughs> there are five more of these in my gun, and they're all going plumb through, you two. <laughs> I guess they lost all their fight, Chad. Come on, let's haul them back to town so we don't hold up the wedding. <laughs> yes, sir. Violet, they, they pardoned you almost the day after I let you out of jail. Found out what really happened. What really did happen, Judge? Well, that confounded sheriff was jealous that Violet was soft on me. Got himself liquored up and tried to talk her into running away with him. Shot himself with his own gun in the ball. Oh, there you see, Cherokee, what happens to a man if he insists on drinking. Well, I don't know about <laughs> Mr. O'Banner. Well, it's a good lesson to me, am I? <laughs> yes, Terry. But I'm so happy right now that Jesse's found me again. I think I'll let you have a mouthful of champagne at the wedding. Yeah, you hear that, Chad? Champagne, the old bubbly. Well, what's <laughs> that to you? You can't drink the stuff at the wedding. It would ruin everything. My drinking champagne would ruin the wedding? Why, <laughs> certainly. You know how it is with champagne. The bubbles get up your nose. Deed I do. Deed <laughs> I do. Well, by the time the bubbles got up your red nose, the wedding champagne would all turn to sparkling burgundy. <laughs> 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 Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. Hollywood.